and welcome back to my channel. This week we're going to be going over slip trailing. So if you were here last week or caught my last video, you will see that I did a how to decorate your pots on the wheel using slip. This week I'm going to be showing you guys how to do that on the table and out of a bottle or some sort of applicator for that. So let's go ahead and get started. So you probably, if you are new to this, know slip as kind of the glue that we use to attach any sort of piece of clay to each other. If you want to use this for more of a decorative aspect, what you will need is a sieve. Um, this one I believe is like a 300 mesh, but I don't think you need it to be that small. Essentially what I did was I kind of watered down my slip a little bit and ran it through the sieve. It's gonna take a minute. You're gonna either wanna use your hand to get that through or a rib to get that through. Whatever you use, as long as you get it through, the slip will come out the other side and it will be pretty homogenous. It's not gonna have any sort of like clumps, abnormalities or things like that in it. You want like a pretty creamy texture. Now, if you want it to be a little bit thicker, you can use this kind of like how you use icing to decorate a cake, which you can use cake decorator tips for this, which can be really awesome. Um, however, I'm not a cake decorator. I was never good at that, so I'm not gonna be showing you that way. But if you are, this might be a trick for you. So I have a little applicator bottle. I took the slip that I threw through my sieve and it is now in here. So it is nice and creamy. I'll show you real quick. But essentially, you can kind of draw with it. So that's what we're gonna be going over today. This is gonna be great if you're somebody who really enjoys getting more of a texture effect on your pots, or if you are somebody who enjoys like say like polka dots or things like stripes that, you know, may be really tedious to apply extra pieces of clay to your piece for. This will just be kind of a way to skip over that process of slipping and scoring all these tiny little coils and or little balls to your tray or whatever it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I have this tray that I had made and we're gonna go ahead and decorate it. The first thing that you wanna think about when doing this is you wanna make sure that whatever you are working on, whether it be a tray or something that you threw or you know something that you sculpted on, you don't want the piece that you're working on in your clay to be so different in moisture that when they dry, they're going to crack away from each other because if the tray dries before the slip dries or the slip dries before the tray dries, it's going to end up kind of cracking at that connection point. We don't want that to happen. So we make sure that this is about leather hard and we'll go ahead and get working on it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add some little, I was thinking maybe just some dots around the edges here. This is something that is way faster to do while slip trailing than it is to you know, make a ton of tiny little balls and apply them to the edges of your tray. Now, this one feels a little bit far apart. So what I do like to always have around me is either a paintbrush or a sponge and some water. Mainly because if you mess up with this, it's really nice that you can just wipe that off and we can keep going. And I think that's pretty much good. Maybe I wanna add something around the rim here, give it more of a serving tray-esque appeal. Maybe I wanna give it little like scallops at the edge. Please be patient with yourself when you're doing this. I'm not an expert either on this. It's just, uh, it takes practice, like all things with clay. Really, all things in art in general is, you know, a new skill is a new skill. And this is not a particular one that I use on a regular basis with my personal work. But it is very fun to try. Now you can have your slip a little bit thicker in consistency than mine is. I just kind of like mine a little bit watery just cause I feel like it's easier for me to control. Mainly because you know, the thicker your slip is, the more you're gonna have to apply pressure on your hands to be able to, you know, get this to work and like come out at the rate that you want it to. 
Now, I like to use a brush mainly so that way, you know, with things like this, where I don't have to use the whole sponge to wipe away, I just kind of want to shape that a little bit more. I can really use this to get a nice solid line. Anyways, you can really see how this is coming out a bit more than the clay is. It's a bit thicker. So with this, when it dries and when this gets fired, this will be, you know, a ridge here. You will be able to feel it with your hands. And so that is the nice part about this rather than making all these tiny little details in clay and then, you know, attaching it on. And, you know, if we wanted to, we could go in and just draw whatever we wanted in the actual plate itself. You know, just messed with it. All right, everyone, so there you have it. That is how to slip trail. Now, there are a million different ways to use this technique. Like I said, you can do it like a cake decorator would with icing. Feel free to experiment with it. I just wanted to show you guys kind of the basics and give you another, you know, tool that you can use in your own clay experimentation and practice. And hopefully you make some cool stuff with it. So if you liked this video, go ahead and hit like, subscribe, and I will see you all next week.